Hey everybody, this is Ryan McClanahan with HistoryThroughCards.com. Hope you're all doing very well today. So quite recently I picked up an awesome card that I've actually been looking for for a long time. And you know, I know that collectors always say that. I always say that. But uh, I wanted to show you this card right here. And it wasn't really the card that I was looking for because I didn't know it actually existed. Uh, I wanted an autograph of Casey Kasem, and uh, just as an added bonus, it was this particular card. Now, if you guys haven't seen these before, this is a 1991 Starline Hollywood Walk of Fame, and there's actually uh, 300 cards in this set. I, um, I didn't know that this set existed back in 1991, 92. Honestly, most of the 90s um, were... A blur and we won't get into reason why but uh <laughs> this card i i really did uh want uh an autograph of casey Kasem, and i grabbed it on this card it was kind of cheap too in fact about 20 bucks and um i'm not entirely sure what casey Kasem's autograph should go for but um if you are a baby boomer or a gen x like me uh, you've obviously listened to uh, the top 40 with Casey Kasem. And um, for me, it was a, a huge part of my childhood uh, going into uh, car rides on the weekends uh, or family trips. Uh, the first thing that we would do is, as little kids, me and, and my, uh, my cousins would, well, first we'd break dance. And I can't break dance anymore. Um, I've tried, but I look like a fool. However, um, we would always uh, have like a list of the top 40, and, and we'd kind of like try to guess uh, who would be in what position uh, on the radio. And Casey Kasem, really, um, he's kind of like a hero to me, really. I think that for a, a lot of other uh, Gen Xers, too, and, and baby boomers, um, I kind of always imagined uh, me being on the radio uh, because of Casey Kasem, but I always kind of wanted to have a, a radio gig. Um, this isn't really too far off, to tell you the truth. Uh, it's just a, a, a little bit of a different format. Um, but uh, Casey Kasem, he's got a, a really amazing uh, career, and uh, I wanted to share that with you today. I, I did find uh, his uh, obituary that has uh, his entire career kind of wrapped up into one article. And um, I I'm going to get back to what my thoughts are on the other end. But I, w I really wanted to show you this. And I don't know if you guys can see this either. The the autograph is actually, it's a little hard to see. It's, it's right here. And you kind of have to uh, turn it side to side to really get a, a, um, a good view of the autograph. But um, you know, I don't know if he signed a lot. I, I just don't know a whole lot about it. Um, apparently, the uh, gentleman that I got this autograph from uh, got it in person. Um, who knows when? Um, but I'm very thrilled to actually include this in my collection. And I've been looking for this particular autograph for a quite a long time, uh, years in fact. Before I get into the article itself, the 1991 Starline, if you guys are not familiar with this particular set, there's 300 cards in it, and it has uh, Hollywood actresses, actors, and uh, celebrities uh, from the, especially the 1980s and uh, the early 90s, uh, and some of these uh, guys and girls actually started their career in the 1930s. I know that Betty Davis is in this set. I think she was still alive in 1991. Everybody who's on a card uh, here is still alive in 1991. And so uh, you would have Betty Davis. Uh, uh, Ed McMahon is in this set. I'm kind of wondering if he's got an autograph too. I actually did see the population report, and it said that they had graded 108 uh, autographs from the set. And uh, it, it's really kind of surprising and um, if you guys have any of these cards, let me know if you have any favorites. I'd, I'd love to actually hear about your stories uh, with this set. Again, I didn't know that this set was around in 1991. Um, <laughs> the, the, the 90s uh, for me were really kind of a blurry decade. I remember the 1980s. 
I don't remember the 1990s all that well. Um, and, you know, the last 20 years has really been um, forgettable. We'll say it's, it's been kind of forgettable, to tell you the truth. Uh, every decade has its um, its distinctness about it. And these two last decades are gray. There's, there's really kind of nothing there, unfortunately. But um, in, in this case, with this set, you can definitely tell it's uh, it's the early 1990s just by the uh, design itself. And so I'll show you the back, too, if you guys uh, haven't seen. So it looks like this. And at the bottom of it, it's kind of really difficult to see, but it says... Uh, 1991 Starline Inc. Um, my eyesight's horrible, but uh, I'm surprised I can actually see that. But that's what the back of these cards look like, and obviously the front. And I wish I could actually show you guys the uh, the autograph, because uh, it's, it's actually a really nice autograph. It just doesn't show up very well here, because my camera does not like baseball cards or any kind of card, I guess. I got the wrong camera, apparently. Anyway, uh, let me uh, let me get on to the um, article. Here we go. This is from the Tulsa World, June 16th, 2014, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Radio host Casey Kasem dies at 82 by Anthony McCartney and David Bowder, Los Angeles. In pop culture, Casey Kasem was as sweet and dependable as a glass of warm milk and a plate of chocolate chip cookies, which only made the ugliness of his last few years of life seem more bizarre and tragic. The radio host of American Top 40 and voice of animated television characters like Scooby-Doo's sidekick Shaggy died Sunday morning at a hospital in Gig Harbor, Washington. He was 82. Kasem suffered from a form of dementia, and his three adult children from his first wife fought a bitter legal battle with Kasem's second wife, Jean, over the control of his health care in his final months. That made Kasem a fixture on news outlets that feed on sleazier side of celebrity life at a time when it wasn't clear he was aware of it or even able to understand this wouldn't seem all that remarkable for a bad-behaving pop star or actor who shed spouses with a frequency of changing characters, but this was Casey Kasem, whose work epitomized the gentler romantic side of pop culture, of a time when stars were admired for their celebrity and worshipped for their talent. American Top 40, which Kasem's soft, homey voice Counting down the hits was a refuge from shock jocks or the screaming big city radio voices that was dependable, broadcast on some thousand stations at its peak. So if you were driving in Connecticut or Kansas, California or Kentucky, you could always take a measure of the pop charge with Casey. Casey weaved stories around the songs anecdotes about interactions with fans, or gee whiz tales about how stars got their starts. Seldom was heard a discouraging word unless it was starting point for a narrative about coming back from hardship, the darkness before the dawn. Interspersed in the countdowns were the long-distance dedications, songs played for a long-lost or distant lover in the hope a heart would be stirred. Listeners might wince at some of the hokey song selections, but only the true cynic would laugh at the emotion that spilled out of the letters Kasem read. At the end of the show always would come Kasem's signature words of advice, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. On the first American Top 40 in July 1970, Kasem counted down to three dog nights, Mama told me not to come, the number one spot. And the years went on, Kasem progressed through disco and punk, arena rock and rap. All were welcome under Casey's big tent. Kasem was of Lebanese descent, born in Detroit as Kamel Amin Kasem, and he spoke out on issues promoting greater understanding of Arab American throughout his life. He made his name as a disc jockey 
and when his career blossomed in the Los Angeles area, he took on other voice work. He was Robin in the animated Batman series. He once said in his work on Scooby-Doo would outlast anything he did. He was succeeded at American Top 40 in 2004 by Ryan Seacrest, a fan who said he used to imitate Kasem counting down the hits when he was a boy. When decades later, I took over his AT40 countdown show, it was a surreal moment, Seacrest said in a statement. Casey had a distinctive, friendly, on-air voice, and he was just as affable and nice if you had the privilege to be in his company. He'll be greatly missed by all of us. Scooby-Doo may last longer, but Kasem will most likely be remembered for American Top 40 and, and his place in the continuum of pop music, counting from American Bandstand to Soul Train, Total Request Live to Spotify playlists. Hard feelings being what they are, it's difficult to imagine that the fight between the people Kasem is leaving behind will simply end with his death. And instead of thinking about squabbling, his fans can imagine what it would have sounded like to hear Kasem counting down to John Legend, Pharaoh Williams, and Iggy Azalea. This is the top 10 things you might not know about Casey Kasem by Sandy Cohen. Los Angeles. Counting down to top 10 things you might not know about radio personality Casey Kasem, the founding voice of American Top 40, who died Sunday. Number 10. Beginning in 1969, Kasem voiced the character Shaggy for the animated series Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? He continued to voice the long-haired hippie in TV, film, and video games until 2009. He also gave voice to characters on Sesame Street and the 1986 Transformers movie, along with voicing Robin on Super Friends. Number 9. Kasem's work on radio commercials was highly lucrative and not nearly as easy as it may have seemed for someone so smooth on the air. Quote, the greatest compliment that anyone can pay me is that after I say something, they remember it, he once said. I'll go over a piece of copy until I've gotten the essence of what the writer had in mind every nunience. Number eight. In addition to his radio show and voice work, Kasem was the co-host of a teen dance show in Los Angeles television during the 1960s called Shebang. He also had a minor hit single during that time, Letter from Elena, and appeared in a few low-budget movies and some network TV series, including the original Hawaii Five-0 and Ironside Number 7. While Kasem seldom appeared on screen, his second wife, Jean Kasem, was a semi-regular in the sitcom Cheers as Loretta Torelli and a regular in a short-lived spinoff, The Torellis. Number six, Kasem gained attention in the 1990s when he blew up because of a staff error on his American Top 40 show and his taped remarks swearing and all made their way into cyberspace. He told the New York Times in 2004 that he didn't know it had been made public until years later. Number five, Kasem was a vegetarian and an activist against factory farming. Number four, as an Arab American activist, Kasem called for a fairer balance between heroes and villains in the 1994 Disney Aladdin sequel, The Return of Jafar. But he added, we're not out there just to be so picky that we become a pain in the neck. We're there to do what we can to call the attention to the sensitivity of not only Arab Americans, but to any ethnic group. Number three, as host of American Top 40, Kasem introduced a romantic segment called Long Distance Dedications. Listeners could send in their dedications and Kasem would pick a few heartfelt messages to read each week on the air, playing the love song that went with it. 
The first long distance dedication Kaysen played was Neil Diamond's Desiree on August 26, 1978. Number two, when American Top 40 premiered on July 4, 1970, the top five songs were Three Dog Nights, Mama Told Me Not to Come, The Jackson Fives, The Love You Save, The Temptations, Ball of Confusion, That's What the World Is Today, Ride Captain Ride by Blues Image, and Frida Payne's Band of Gold. When Kaysen retired from AT40 at the end of 2003, the top five tracks were Hey Ya by Outkast, Here Without You by Three Doors Down, Sugar Sugar by Baby Bash, where the fuck is that? Let me try that again. By Baby Bash. Perfect by Simple Plan and Nickelback's Someday. One, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. The radio sign-off Kasem used throughout his five-decade career. I wonder how many people were inspired and got into radio because of Casey Kasem. I was inspired. Uh, I didn't go into radio because I don't have a voice for radio. But I definitely enjoy listening to the radio. I listen to uh, talk radio, in fact, and I listen to a lot of music, particularly music of my generation, uh, music from the 1980s, the pop music. And uh, I listen to a lot of big band music and a lot of 1970s funk and early 80s. There's like a transition there um, from like, if you actually listen to funk, you can you can listen to the transition that they made. Anyway, that's a different story. But um, I always enjoyed listening to Casey Kasem's American Top 40. And when he retired, I was very disappointed. Um, and I'm not a big fan of Ryan Seacrest. And I was like, dude, you couldn't have picked somebody better. Um, I, you know, I just, there's something about Ryan Seacrest I, I'm not a big fan of. I'm not trying to put the guy down. Obviously, he's pretty successful at what he does. But um, that those are huge shoes to fill. And um, the only one, as far as I can concern, that could fill those shoes was uh, Casey Kasem himself. And so I, I do miss him. I think that uh, the music today, if he was alive uh, and listening to the music today, uh, I'm wondering what he would say about it because I, I think a lot of it is junk. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm a little on the old school here, and uh, I I listen to a lot of music, but I, I'm not a big fan of today's pop music. And I, again, I, I listen to a, a whole wide variety of, of stuff. Um, mostly uh, 1980s uh, pop and 1970s funk and uh, 1940s uh, big band. So that's really the kind of music that I listen to. And every time I uh, write about a specific era, I'm usually listening to the music of that era to help me write. And so uh, that, I think, has always been uh, helpful. As I said before, I really wanted an autograph of Casey Kasem because he meant a lot to me and he meant a lot to my generation and uh, baby boomers as well. And I was really surprised when I did see this because I didn't, again, I didn't know that he had a card out there. And then um, I had just kind of like gone on eBay and started surfing. Just out of the blue, I typed in Casey Kasem uh, autograph and this showed up. Uh, again, I don't know how much his autograph uh, should be going for, um, but I thought $20, I, I can't go wrong. Um, I did do some research on his autograph to make sure that this was uh, what how he signed. And so uh, it looks pretty good to me. In fact, unfortunately, like I said, I, it's not a very good, you can't really see it all that well, which I'm, I'm really kind of sorry about that, guys. But it is a very nice looking card and an autograph. And it's a good way for me to remember Casey Kasem and uh, the time that I had listening to him in the car and, and um, trips and all that. So it, it is, again, a, a very good memory for me. And it's why I, I, I really think that this is probably 
uh, in my top 10 uh, all-time collectibles uh, in my collection. And, and that's actually saying something. Um, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's different uh, when you're uh, collecting, when you're collecting vintage, I, most of the players that I'm collecting, I've never seen before. Most of them, I think, have passed away even before I was born. So it, in this instance, uh, this is a little bit different. This is uh, my childhood, in fact. So guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it, as always. If you have a story about Casey Case from, or the American Top 40, let me know. And if you have any uh, really great music suggestions, let me know that too, because I'm I'm really into music. Um, I uh, I do have a story about uh, the first time I bought a record. I'm gonna save that for uh, another video because I, I do have some other musicians uh, that I want to uh, share with you guys here from the 1957 Tops Hit Stars set, which is one of my favorite sets from the 1950s. But uh, that'll be in another video. Uh, again, guys, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. And if you have any stories, let me know because I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So I will talk to you later. Bye.